This time on Second Chance Ohana. Hey guys! About a month ago, we refinished a dresser, the Industrial Masculine Dresser. You can see the link right up here. The client who bought that piece loved it. In fact, she wanted her nightstands to have the same style as well. So this is going to be our first time taking a client's actual furniture pieces and refinishing it for them. We're super excited about it and excited to give these guys new life, but with a beautiful style that's complementary to that dresser. So join us as we see if we can give these babies a second chance. Aloha, I'm Danny. In 2016, I moved from Maui to Arizona with my husband to be closer to my mom and pops who live just a few miles away. On our journey, Kyle and I expanded our family by adopting three tweens and of course, Barkley, who helps make sure everyone feels like part of the Ohana. Mom and I love to hunt for used furniture and restore it because it's fun to be creative, use power tools, and of course, make money. And because like people, sometimes furniture just needs a second chance. After removing the hardware, if you use some painter's tape on the back edge of the drawer, it makes it so much easier for pulling your drawers in and out without the handles on there. To clean these guys, we used a TSP alternative, but you can use anything that has a good degreaser in it. Just be sure to be very thorough and rinse it with uh, just some clean water after it's done. And you know what? I just want to tell you guys that if it's a small piece of furniture, get it up on a table. That is going to help your back so much. Ah, it's finally winter in Arizona, our favorite time of year where the weather is at 60, 70 degrees, the garage door is open, the air is flowing, and everyone is happy to be outside, including our little workshop dog. Although Barkley loves being outside all year long, he is loving this cool pavement. I find it easier to pull out the drawers and work on them separately. Oh, and I had a little surprise with this one. Look what I found. Do you know what this is? Do you remember? Like, it was an old iPod from the early 2000s. I wonder if it still works. So for the look that we were going for, we wanted part of it to be painted and part of it to be stained. And on the sides here, it was very, very thin wood. So we're gonna paint this. We're not gonna try to get it back to raw wood. So I'm just doing a, a quick scuff sanding with either 180 or 220 grit sandpaper. On the tops, we wanted to take them back to raw wood. So you guys, our client told us that her husband, who does woodworking, told her that these pieces were solid wood. Whenever anyone says that, don't believe them. Anything made in the 21st century, well, almost anything, is not going to be solid wood at all. In fact, this piece was a lot of MDF uh, covered with a very thin veneer. So I had to be super careful while sanding this. When you have pieces like this that you're trying to get down to bare wood, which is just a thin veneer on top of MDF, you're gonna have to work slowly up in grits. So mom started with a 120, very light handed, and she kept it moving so that it wasn't going to burn through. Cause once it's burned through, there's no going back. After the 120, we moved up to the 180. And again, you're just smoothing it out. And then we finally got to the 220 that took care of all the little last stain blemishes and prepped it perfectly smooth for the stain we were gonna be adding. These drawer fronts were the same thin veneer that was on the top. So I had to be, again, extra careful with the sanding 
And after sanding with the 220, I didn't get all the stain off, so I was going over some areas with um, just by hand, just to make sure I didn't burn through on those particular areas. Whoops, Mom, you forgot to finish the sides. Don't worry, I got it. We have learned the hard way to always use mineral spirits before we do any staining. And the reason we do this is because just wiping that on reveals any imperfections that we may have, such as swirl marks from the sander. We're going to be adding stripes to these nightstands on the top and on the fronts of the drawers. This is a tedious process. You really have to make sure it's symmetrical, the left nightstand versus the right nightstand, and you need to make sure they're perfectly spaced apart and that they are completely straight and level all the way down. I think this process took us about 20 to 30 minutes just to get two lines of tape for our first stripe. For our stripes, we wanted one wide black stripe in the middle and a narrow white stripe on each side of that. So to do this, we didn't really have a method, but we started out with the white stripe and made that two tape widths wide. So we just took two pieces of tape and on the top and on the bottom and then use that as our guide for our second piece of tape. Yes, we are done with the taping for now. So we used our new favorite paint, Melange One, in jet black for the black stripe. And this paint is so good, I just love it. You don't need to do any priming if you have a, a good surface to work on. And we use the same jet black from Melange One on the body of both of our nightstands. For our thin white stripes, we made our own do-it-yourself chalk paint with some white latex paint and some calcium carbonate. We did this because we're trying to get rid of what's left in this gallon, but in hindsight, it was actually a poor idea. We should have just used our Sherwin-Williams trim enamel paint that we have in a beautiful shell white because what happened with this chalk paint is once we added the polyurethane, it yellowed over by the next day. And I guess we just really hadn't used a white chalk paint with poly to see how that would happen. So lesson learned, we'll just stick with the higher quality all-in-one mineral paints. And if we had had a melange one in white, we would have used it. But instead we were trying to cut costs and save money with this chalk paint. Terrible idea. Now that the black stripe is dry, it's time to tape off the stripes for the white. And I'm pretty sure this is the point where mom really started getting frustrated. We didn't spend as much time getting footage of it, but adding these stripes to each piece, I'm pretty sure took, what, 45 minutes, mom? At least. Yeah, she was, um, she was, she was done by the end of this. <laughs> But it came out great. Look how nice these clean, crisp lines are. You guys, the lines are crisp and clear, but do you see that little white splatter on the black? I can't believe that happened. Time for more touch-up. After all the touch-ups, 
I rolled on a coat of the water-based polyurethane over the paint. My plan was after I finished all the coats, I would go back, pull off the tape, and stain the top and the fronts of the drawers, and then use a wipe-on poly on them. When applying stain, we like to work together as a team because in our dry Arizona climate, the stain after it goes on dries really quickly and gets sticky and tacky. So it's best if one of us is applying it and the other one is quickly wiping off the excess. As always, we list all the products that we use down in the description below. In this case, we're using the Minwax Gel Stain in the Hickory color. And this will match the client's dresser that we finished a few weeks ago. When refinishing used furniture, you're going to run into random little problems. See this drawer all the way on the right? At some point in its lifetime, some sort of oil was spilled inside that drawer and you can see how it soaked into the bottom, to the side, and even on the face of the drawer. It actually, through lots of sanding, ended up being fine and easily covered in the stain. The only tricky part we ran into was getting that tape to stick to it. Somehow we missed filming our wipe on poly stage, but we got four coats of wipe on poly on the tops of the nightstands and we did three coats on the drawer fronts. And now it's time to add those handles. You may remember that the dresser that our client purchased had brown leather poles on top of the black paint. And to make them complement each other, we purchased these great black leather poles to sit on top of the wood stain. Don't they look great? Well, we finally finished yes. all the stripes and those nightstands. <laughs> I'm so glad. Yeah, do you remember <laughs> what these pieces look like when she first brought them to us? And here's how we transform them and what they look like now. Well, these pieces were not without their issues. What was the most challenging thing for you? Two things. First, the sanding. The veneer was so thin, I had to be extra, extra careful not to burn through it. And second were those stripes. I mean, there were 18 stripes that we had to do. We had to, I went through, I think we went through a whole roll of that frog tape and just had to do them over and over again with so much touch up to get them perfect. 
And I don't think we hardly filmed the touch-ups because it was five minutes here, five minutes there, but it took forever because as soon as we got one stripe perfect, a little would bleed over or we'd actually, our hand would move and we'd get a little spot. So needless to say, it took forever. So for those of you who custom refinish furniture, what would you have charged for these? I think we undercharged because we didn't realize how long these stripes would take and all the sanding. So we charged $150 and I know there's a lot of variables, but just looking at this final product, what would you have charged to do this? We'd love to hear. And thank you so much for watching you guys. We hope you learned something today. We hope you all like, comment on this video, subscribe, check out our other videos. We recently just did one last week of a cozy winter flip. Go ahead and check that out. And we hope you have a very Merry Christmas season. Aloha. Aloha.